Here we run. She was cuddling. Keep running. We're still in the middle of winter. The NHL season is well underway. Well, as, as well as it is possible during a worldwide pandemic. And some of you may already know that I am a big hockey fan since my childhood. And today I want to take you back to my childhood with actual toys that I had back then. And the younger viewers uh, uh, among you may uh, not even remember these figures anymore here. Uh, they are not actually rare, but they were released uh, around 1997 and 1998 for two years. It's a relatively short-lived line. Uh, from Playmates Toys, the NHL Pro Zone 12 inch hockey action figures is what I'm going to show you today. I have three of these figures here and one of them is still in box. Let's take a quick first look at these figures. We have from Van Bisbrouck, goaltender of the Florida Panthers in his home jersey. And then we've got Paul Correa, the uh, captain of the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, also in his home jersey. And in the box here, we've got Sergei Fedorov of the Detroit Red Wings, one of the uh, first and most successful Russian players in the NHL. And we are going to unbox this figure uh, today on the show. But before we do that, we uh, look at the box, as always, up first. And we can see this is a quite interestingly shaped box, triangular shape. Really creative, as you will see, and here on uh, one side, it's got several of the of the other uh, famous NHL players of that era that were made into an action figure by Playmates Toys. Paul Correa, as we have already seen, of the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Then we have got Brett Hall here from the St. Louis Blues. Uh, Ray Burke of the Boston Bruins, so seconds of the Colorado Avalanche, Grant Fur, the goaltender of the St. Louis Blues, and Chris Telios of the Chicago Blackhawks. As I said, these figures were made by Playmates Toys, and Playmates Toys is still active today uh, in 2022. Uh, they own the license for uh, Turtles, King Kong, and it looks like they've even uh, created a Billy Eilish doll recently, among with other smaller uh, franchises. But this company has specialized in dolls and action figures. On the other side of the box, we can actually read that Sergei Fedorov is part of the 1998 Collector Series. There have been uh, two series uh, released. Uh, one of them was in 1997, the other in 1998. And there's a silver sticker on here that says NHL Pro Zone. It's actually printed as a uh, relief. Feels very nicely. And we've got a full body set of the player that's included here. Uh, and you can uh, make a very good face-to-face -face comparison between the toy and the real-life counterpart. And then we look at the back of the box and here you can see they put a lot of effort into designing uh, the, the whole uh, product, the whole packaging. Uh, we've got a portrait shot of the uh, prototype of the figure and if you look closely you can actually see that they used uh, two different prototypes of uh, the action figure to uh, use uh, for the product photography. One of them got the uh, got black hairs and the other brown, while Sergei Fedorov actually has uh, brown hairs. So I guess the uh, big portrait shot we can see here uh, 
it's the very first prototype that they ever make for this figure to uh, use it as uh, a model for the product photos and over here where it uh, where you can see the uh, different poses the figure can uh, assume this is a different prototype it has already the brown hair same like on the final uh, production model as you will see uh, below the portrait chart we've got a whole bunch of stats and personal facts about the player they did a lot of effort to uh, compile all these numbers uh, you can see uh, so the uh, Fedorov was just coming off his first uh, Stanley Cup win uh, and this figure was uh, manufactured and I love how it says that they've raised the bar of uh, sports collectibles with this new line and uh, everything is painstakingly detailed and nothing was left out except the sweat well, we will see afterwards when we unbox uh, how true this actually is. Uh, I can tell you they had to make some compromises. But as you can see, it is, it is at least an, an officially licensed product. Uh, they've got the uh, approval from the NHLPA, which is the Players Association. And they also have the official uh, NHL approval, so they have the logo on there. That means they can use... Uh, all the uh, team's logos and the player names of course but there's of course a bit more to hockey than just that for example they had to leave out uh, all the uh, uh, equipment uh, manufacturers logos as you will see later on but before we unbox uh, at the bottom can see um, some of the other action figures. I can remember I actually had all of them. Uh, Yaromir Jagr, you can see here, uh, Eric Lindros of the Philadelphia Flyers, and the goaltender Patrick Roy of the uh, Colorado Avalanche. And then we've got the other two figures as well, which we are going to look at today. So I think. Uh, we are going to unbox this Sergei Federer figure from this quite interesting box. And that's actually uh, not a problem because these figures, uh, even though it, this was just a short-lived toy run, these figures are still pretty common, uh, still pretty easy to find on eBay. Uh, all the players uh, shown here you can still find them for uh, around twenty dollars, even boxed. Uh, the only exception uh, is uh, if you happen to find the two players from the Canadian teams. If you happen to find them, these are the two rarest figures. But all the other ones, uh, they are still very, very common and uh, easy to find, so actually we are not destroying any value uh, when we unbox this. That's what it looks like, and we are going to cut uh, Sergei free from his cardboard cage, uh, put all his uh, equipment together and set him up for game time. Okay, and the first thing I noticed after 25 years, these figures still retain their uh, distinctive smell uh, upon unboxing. Uh, must be some kind of chemical. I'm not saying that they're toxic, but uh, there's a certain, there has to be a certain chemical uh, used for the uh, manufacturing of these figures that uh, retains the smell after uh, over two decades. That's uh, pretty fun. Uh, lots of wires and threads to cut through, lots of plastic parts, and we got to make sure that we uh, retrieve everything from the packet, uh, not only the figure, also the uh, stick, and the helmet and the gloves, which are uh, separate, separate from the figure. And when we have done that, uh, we have 
the figure with that, the stick, the helmet and the gloves. And before I want to dress up uh, Sergei Fedorov completely, let's use this opportunity to actually undress him and uh, show you how much effort they put into these uh, figures. Uh, his jersey opens with a Velcro on his back. I'm going to remove that and you can see, wow, these figures come with all their protective gear for their upper body and the arms. Look at that. I'm going to remove the uh, pants as well. The pants are made out of fabric as well, but not the socks. These are molded as are the uh, skates. The skates are molded onto the figure as well. They are connected with a joint, but they cannot be taken off. Uh, can you imagine uh, the uh, amount of work it takes to create molds for each and every single uh, of these pieces? So they definitely uh, took a big amount of effort into these figures. Uh, going to take these off to show you the uh, construction of this figure and the articulation. Uh, you can see that for each arm of the figure uh, three different parts of protective gear was used, the shoulder uh, guard, uh, elbow guard and everything. Wow, that's, that's really, really impressive. Uh, the, full, the big shoulder pad actually doesn't come off. Uh, of this particular figure because the head is in its way. I assume the factory uh, put the shoulder pads on before putting on the head onto the body. But I remember from my childhood as I actually was playing a lot with these figures that I was able to uh, take off the shoulder pads of certain figures. Well, it doesn't seem to be the case for Fedorov, that's okay. Uh, still a close look. You can actually see they made the uh, body uh, white, which is interesting. Uh, looks like uh, the player is uh, supposed to wear a uh, white shirt underneath his protective gear. Step in manufacturing they had to take because basically the body would have been uh, skin tone. As you can see, uh, the neck is uh, sprayed uh, in actual skin tone and then it uh, transitions to white. And on these figures, uh, which uh, all use the same body and same articulation, we have 14 points of articulation. Uh, you can see uh, the head can turn, the shoulders move. Elbows have a point and also the wrists. Uh, the arms can go in and out quite far, have a big range of movement, which uh, is important uh, for later on when we uh, try to create some uh, action scenes and matchups. That's really cool to see. Uh, actually, uh, don't be afraid if the figure breaks into two parts. Uh, separating the uh, legs from the uh, body. It's actually uh, been done on purpose like that. Nothing will break. You can easily uh, snap them together. Just in case you or your child uh, carried out a bit too many body checks. That's okay. These are hockey action figures and they can withstand something. So simply snap them together. Now let's prepare Sergei Fedorov for game time and we dress him up again and this is an uh, excellent toy to uh, train the fine motor skills of your child. Uh, I mean, uh, putting these, uh, all this uh, protective gear back on really requires a bit of uh, patience and skill. So if you have a hockey loving child, uh, these are the perfect toys, even though they are old and uh, many of you probably will not remember these players anymore. These figures still offer a lot of value for their actual price. 
Okay, putting the uh, torsi on like this, make sure that it properly fits and then also putting on the uh, helmet's thin strap is uh, somewhat challenging. Uh, again, it requires good fine motor skills to uh, actually uh, thread this uh, strap through that hook where it's supposed to go and putting the gloves back on and then we have our circuit feather off action figure complete in its weight sourcey and from the uh, box I was able to uh, retrieve the information that Sergei Fedorov actually suits left so I uh, gave him his stick in the appropriate way into his, his gloves so it is actually uh, realistic like it was in real life and I want to take a close look at the uh, figures in a Crushed up condition, ready for game time, on the example of uh, Anaheim Mighty Ducks uh, Captain Paul Korea. Uh, let me take the uh, helmet off again so you can actually see how these faces are done. This is uh, pretty uh, hard plastic that the heads are made of. Uh, lovely structure in the hair and you can clearly see uh, the face it is somewhat recognizable uh, uh, of Paul Korea a uh, player of a Japanese uh, descent and that's pretty much the uh, very best that uh, the toy manufacturers were able to do in the mid 90s when it came to uh, replicating faces of uh, actual real life people and you can also see uh, the jersey has the uh, shoulder patches uh, the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim and the team's logo of course this is all screen printed but out of experience from my childhood I can tell you the jerseys even though uh, they look good right now uh, with all these uh, soon stripes and everything, they look high quality, but they wear pretty, pretty fast. Uh, so only after a few minutes of playing, they will get dirty and they uh, uh, will begin to fray. And they also cut uh, uh, dust balls uh, really, really easily. So uh, what's really nice is all the, uh, the gloves. They actually uh, stay on uh, very well. They fit very well. And take a look on the stick. Actually, uh, the stick's end is actually uh, taped. And then, uh, as already seen on Sergei Fedorov, these players have uh, fabric pants, and from there downwards, everything is molded. These socks, these skates, uh, these cannot be taken off. And also a weak point of these figures is uh, between these socks when they uh, actually uh, uh, make contact with each other, when they touch each other, uh, the paint top, especially the white, will tip off rather easily. In fact, you can already see, despite I hardly played with this figure, these aren't the original figures from my childhood. I repurposed them over the years. Uh, for display purposes and to uh, uh, retain my childhood memories. Uh, what's really nice is you can actually see the uh, thin guards uh, being molded into these socks, actually uh, peeking through. And the skates are also uh, done really nicely. They didn't simply mirror them. You can see on the uh, uh, full laces. These are two different molds. It's actually recognizable as a left and uh, right skate. And they are actual hockey skates, styled very authentically. And then on the back, you can see that the statement from the box that they didn't leave out anything but the uh, sweat isn't uh, exactly true. Uh, 
Paul Correa is missing his uh, jersey number, number 9, on his back. And that's not a production error. I, I know all of the uh, all of these figures uh, that have a single digit number have been like that. They didn't uh, print that. Uh, was probably uh, too difficult to go over the Velcro. Uh, as you can already see with the name, it doesn't uh, line up uh, really nicely. Isn't exactly even. So I guess that's what that that was about the best they were able to do back then. Uh, still very nice. So the uh, soon on uh, details the, from the striping, the color change is actually all uh, soon. Uh, I really like this uh, Paul Korea figure, even though that's not my favorite team. My favorite team, as you can see. Uh, or still the Florida Panthers. I got a natural vintage jersey of them. I also have the newer logo uh, jersey. And with that, uh, let's look at the goaltender in our lineup. Which is from the Florida Panthers. She used to be the goaltender back in 1997, 1998 from Wendy's Brown. And we take a close look on this figure as well and see how it's different to the field players. Uh, he's wearing the goalie mask, of course, without any artwork on it, except for the number 34 on its back. And you can actually uh, remove this mask or put it onto his head like this. Uh, and it will actually stay, but we are going to uh, remove it real quick so we can see his face as well. I think that's the, been done really nice. And of course, I pay extra attention as a Panthers fan to the details. You can see the shoulder pads. Uh, the uh, palm tree crosses a hockey stick in front of a sun symbol and of course there's the Leaping Panther logo that's been done really nicely. The screen print actually is of a really good quality. These logos do not come off but the jerseys itself, uh, the quality of these uh, could be improved. Uh, also really nice uh, how the uh, yellow and orange striping is stitched onto the jersey. That's really cool. And of course he has the uh, special goalie gear, the stick glove and the hatching glove. And a further down you can see he's got the Pads. These are made out of uh, rubber, somewhat flexible. And when we look at it from behind, you can see he's missing his number as well. His number on the back. I wonder why. 34 would have been easily uh, easy to uh, print onto this jersey. Because on Sergei Fedorov, he actually has a back number being printed on. So that's weird. And our Florida Panthers goaltender figure actually has special goaltender pants. Which feature extra padding. The fabric is much more heavy. That's a great level of detail. And then you can see how the goalie pads are... Uh, attached to this figure with these straps. I'm uh, going to remove them real quick so you can see the difference between a field player and a goalie action figure. They did use the same skates for the uh, field players and the goaltenders, however. Uh, you know goalies usually have uh, lower skates but they simply use, uh, reused uh, the same molds for, uh, no matter if it's a goalie or a field player. Okay, putting the goalie pads back on. Not going to undress the entire figure since it's actually the same underneath, uh, just like Sergei Fedorov. And you can also see uh, on his stick 
the manufacturer details are missing because they did not license that. Same goes for the uh, goalie specific equipment parts. And remember what it said on the box of Sergei Fedorov, nothing has been left out except the sweat. Well, uh, on this Paul Korea figure, as we look at the stick and the gloves, we can definitely uh, see some details that have been left out. The equipment manufacturer logos, actually. I guess uh, the... Uh, NHL and NHL PA license was already expensive enough, so they didn't bother with uh, any uh, of the uh, sports equipment manufacturer brands. Now that we took our detailed looks onto these figures, I would say we are ready for playtime and we uh, want to see uh, how these actually uh, can pose and how, uh, what the, what's the uh, playability of these figures. I can tell you from my childhood there's a lot of playability and want to see uh, how we can uh, post them. Uh, let's start with the uh, goaltender. Well, they actually, the figures can actually stand if with a bit of effort. Uh, the stand you can see here is just a generic uh, action figure doll stand. wasn't included with these figures simply have it for display purposes, uh, but what we can try uh, with our hand or skull tender is uh, see if, the, if he can do the split like this. The stick actually doesn't uh, stay really well uh, in his glove, so I just have to uh, display him like this. Let's say that looks good. And then let's take whole Korea, leaving the helmet off so you can see uh, at least one of the player's faces a little bit better. And you can actually do a lot of poses and they will even uh, stand on their own uh, you can see the 14 points of articulation really, really help. Uh, especially make sure that you post these skates properly. These skates are actually really sturdy. And we can uh, set up a one by one uh, encounter for Korea trying to score against the Panthers like this. Also, uh, there are different poses uh, possible. For example, uh, with the field players, they can assume the slap shot pose. So we pose them like this and make sure that they always look uh, in, the in the direction they want to actually shoot. You never look at the puck, you look at where you are going to Shoot. And then it looks something like this. This is pretty nice. Well, what you also can do is uh, make the player kneel on one of its legs. For example, during a warm up, during as they stretch their bodies and get prepared for actual game time. An additional way of posing the players is to uh, make them sit. So they did think of situations where they need to go to the uh, penalty box or uh, back to the bench. Can uh, make them sit down like this. And what we also can do is uh, classic one by one situations with uh, one field player approaching the goalie and trying to get past behind him. Unfortunately there weren't any other accessories, no gold nets or anything, no ice rinks or something, so you have to imagine that or uh, uh, try to uh, create something uh, for yourself. But you know it's a good child's toy, a good quality toy uh, on the fact that it actually uh, 
makes use of your child's imagination, so your child has to actively think and improve something and uh, uh, create something uh, out of its own mind, rather than the uh, toy is entertaining the child, it actually should be the other way around. And in today's uh, times of video games and smartphones and everything, uh, I would still say uh, toys of this kind, action figures like this, that uh, encourage you to actively play, are still uh, some of the best things uh, that can happen to your child. Uh, I can tell you I played for hours and hours like this. I grew up in the 90s and uh, that's, that's all we had. We didn't have any uh, smartphones yet or uh, I wasn't even uh, online. Internet wasn't really known back then. So uh, toys like this me meant a lot to me and they still mean a lot to me because I am able to recognize the uh, playtime value behind them and you can go on hours like this uh, playing with actual 3D toys that you can pose and move and they invite you to imagine a storyline and things like that and that's that's a cool thing about these old school toys that they actually invited you to play to uh, play actively and now I want to or at least uh, try to do uh, an actual game setup by bringing in so a feather off as well but it's really not, not that easy to do in fursuit, but as said, especially if you have a child, these toys are just perfect to train their fine motor skills. Let's just propose this is an all-star game, never mind the different sources. And I would say about like this. And that's a really good setup. Lots of action. I love hockey because it's such a fast-paced action game. All the action scenes have fascinated me since I was a child. And take a look at this diorama, I almost want to say. That's really some hockey action right there. Uh, actually, it would be realistic if we take away Paul Korea and Sergei Fedorov. Uh, trying to get past John Van Dyke's Park because at that time, back in 1998, the uh, lighter colored sources were the home sources and the darker colored uh, sources were, the, uh, were used for the away games. I actually like to uh, display uh, some of the players without the helmet so you can see the faces. Uh, and gives you and and that will be really, really, really. I have to say I like to uh, display the uh, I have to say I like to display some of the players uh, without a helmet I think that looks uh, just as cool uh, said we can propose uh, they are in a uh, pre-game warm-up situation so th these figures really offer a lot of uh, playtime fun and they are uh, almost forgotten nowadays uh, since all of these players already uh, retired a long long time ago and it's, it's great to see by uh, playmates that they actually uh, went the effort to create these even though uh, football and uh, especially baseball was much more uh, popular and still is actually. What I found quite interesting is that they are for ages 8 plus, so that's a relatively small uh, target audience. Uh, I wonder how many of them uh, actually did sell and uh, how popular they really were. I, I only know they manufactured a lot of these and that's the reason why they are still available today. I said 
easy to find on eBay. Do not pay more than 20 to 25 dollars uh, for a boxed version. Uh, simply look up uh, any cell 12 inch figure on eBay. You may also add the word uh, ProZone or Playmates to uh, find them a little bit better. There's still plenty of them online and uh, if you are a hockey fan, especially if you have uh, uh, kids that are hockey fans, these figures of, still offer a great value uh, even nowadays. Um, if these aren't your favorite players or teams, uh, remember there were uh, more figures than that and actually even more than uh, what was thrown on the uh, box of Sergei Fedorov. I can remember there was Mike Richter of the New York Rangers, the goaltender. There was Patrick Roy, the goaltender of the uh, Colorado Avalanche. There was Mike Modano of the Dallas Stars. Yaromir Yager, of course, uh, captain of the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. And Eric Lindros of the Philadelphia Flyers. And then I see, I see here we have Paul Korea of the Ducks, Sergei Fedorov of the Red Wings, Tom Glenn of the Florida Panthers. And who else was there? Uh, let me think. Oh yes, uh, Ray Burke of the Boston Bruins. Grant Fur of the St. Louis Blues, Brett Hall from the same team, Chris Telios of the Blackhawks, uh, a little of over 10 figures if I uh, remember correctly. Uh, it's too bad that it only lasted for uh, two seasons, this toy, but uh, I'm glad they made the effort to uh, release those and I'm glad they exist uh, for a hockey fan, these are uh, really cool figures. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Kidwana's Toys and remember, go cats go and I'm looking forward uh, to uh, finally attend the Florida Panthers home game uh, eventually when the pandemic has passed. And until then, whatever your favorite team is, uh, I wish them good luck and I'll see you next Saturday, of course, for another episode of Kidwana's Toys. Goodbye!